today I'm going to upgrade my vinyl jukebox to be able to select songs using the usual keypad to operate an iPod and I've done that with a kit that I've bought from cdadapters.com first things first turn the key and up she comes blinding light uh, the first thing I'm going to do is prop this up because the gas struts are absolutely knackered now that I've disconnected the power um, I need to get into this box because with the kit came a new chip which I need to fit so the first thing is is to disconnect all of these connectors and remove the cover of the box. Now that I've got the control box off, um, it's in a metal grid, uh, sorry, metal cage. The box itself slides out of the cage. Now that it's out, it will actually, the cover will just come off with a bit of twine. Hold on a minute. Yeah, it's a bit difficult one-handed, but we've done it now. And that reveals this is the chip we're going to be replacing, which I shall do now once I've got my earth strap on. Now the new chip is fitted. Just make sure that the notch is at the top, which matches the old chip, which had the notch at the top. I'm going to keep that. You never know, might need it control boxes back together and just need to remount it on the back of the jukebox. OK, box is mounted. Plug the coin Mac back in. So, uh, the display dashboard. And finally the mechanism which is for the vinyl. Obviously it will still be able to play vinyls so you need to keep that all connected still. Now the chip's been changed in the computer you have to reset everything. Um, its brain will be scrambled. Now to do that you need a screwdriver and you can hold that in which is a push button and while pushing that button in you simultaneously push this button, you hold them in together and that will reset the machine. Because you've been messing around with the uh, computer you need to reset any error codes and to do that you flick it onto service one, two, three seconds and then you type in six nine nine and that will wipe any fault codes that are on the machine. Now you've seen the installation of the chip, before I fit the cables I'll uh, give you a quick run through of how it all works. It's uh, fairly simple. You've got your iPod, plugs into the iPod cable, iPod cable plugs into the iPod adapter and so does the power pack which plugs into a service socket within the jukebox so everything can be hidden, you don't have to see anything. Um, the iPod adapter has got a cable that connects to the computer of the jukebox, the data wire, and then you've got your audio out cable, which you'll fit a ground loop isolator to to stop the mains hum, and then that connects to a piggyback connection, um, and you're going to take a cable off inside the jukebox plug this in and then plug the jukebox cable into that it makes the lights flash it's the audio out and uh, we shall go through that now I've turned the lights on so you can see what we're doing here although I will turn it off in a moment uh, to make all little flashing lights work when the iPod's working you have to fit this jumper cable on the amplifier down here you've got uh, auxiliary. I'm going to take that plug out, I'm going to put this red one in 
and then plug the white one onto the red one and there it is plugged in now okay now we're going to plug that data cable into that data socket so simple as that just nice and tight in and for the power pack it's down there somewhere there you go that's the power socket I shall plug in it's a bit dusty I need to wipe that down and that's the power supply installed then again the ground loop isolator is being plugged into the piggyback wire which was that one down there the other end of the ground loop isolator is going to plug into the end of the iPod adapter if you remember that one there we go and that's all hooked up which just leaves the iPod ok so uh, the iPod cable I'm going to plug this into the iPod adapter which is this fella here and not forgetting the power lead and that's now plugged into the adapter and finally the last piece I'm going to switch off and plug in and then we're going to have to initialize the jukebox to recognize the iPod and the folders I've put on it to initialize the jukebox to recognize the iPod you select service again now I've got the lid partially open with the gas strut because we're going to turn the, turn it on now that's in the service position and we have to select 777 and it should initialize now yeah I've just done a bit of reading up now that I've typed in the 777 on the actual computer you now get four dashes come up and it should take about 15 minutes to initialize because I've got about 850 860 songs on the iPod so I shall come back in a moment now that's uh, it only took about eight minutes but the uh, dashes went away uh, I've re-switched it back to on so just to make sure everything works as normal I'm going to select a vinyl that was quick that's all working so we shall cancel Uh, to select the iPod tunes, it begins with a five. Uh, now it initialises off that. Great. Just cable tie all this wires out of the way and we're ready to go. And there we have it. I've just left the iPod there which is wedged in quite nicely. All the other wires are tidied up and cable tied. And for all intensive purposes you've got a 1200 selection jukebox.